All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing sensor and neuron convergence. So for this topic, I want to tell you a little story. So about five years ago, I took a physiology lab course. And on this particular day, we're going to be studying sensory convergence. So each of us was given a compass. This kind of compass where not like north, east, south, and west. It's this compass where like there's two needles attached to this one point. So the red things are needles. So we were supposed to use particular you know, spots in our body to test this specific theory. And I'm gonna go into that. So say this is my forearm here, okay, my forearm. And I put the two needles on my forearm. They're pretty close together. Like this like needle number one, needle number two is pretty close together. And what I feel is I only feel one needle. Even though there are, there are two needles touching my forearm, I only feel one needle. Okay. Now, a little bit later, I use my fingertips. So let me use my, uh, I'm gonna use my fingertips. Okay. I use my fingertips and I have uh, needle one and needle two. Okay. I do the same thing, right? And in this instance, the same distance, I feel two needles. I'm able to tell the difference between two needles. Now back to my forearm, what I did is, you know, after I realized I can only feel one needle, I started to move it. I suppose just basically space out the needle and then I would feel like space it all, you know, like that much. And then I would feel two needles touching my skin. Why? This is where sensory neuron convergence comes into play. So let's start with figure one. What figure one is saying is that we have one needle touching here and another, you know, another needle touching here. Pretend this is your skin. Now this receptor here is talking to this neuron and the receptor here is talking to the same neuron, the exact same neuron. So essentially, this receptor is converging on the same neurons. These two receptors are converging on the same neuron. So we only feel one neuron. We only, sorry, we only feel one needle. Okay? Kind of interesting. So we say is that this has a high, rather, let's say, large receptive field. low discrimination. Okay. Why is it large receptive field? Well, this one neuron is covering a large distance. The receptive field where all the receptors are is converging onto one neuron. And the receptive field is quite large for one neuron. This one neuron has a large receptive field. Low discrimination because even though we have a large receptive field, that does not mean we have a high discrimination. We have a low discrimination because if this entire section here is only talking to one neuron, I could put 500 ne you know, needles here and I would only feel one needle because we cannot tell the difference. This one neuron cannot tell the difference of where the stimuli are coming from because they're all talking from the same place. Unlike figure two here, Figure two, we have, you know, same thing, two needles touching two different points. However, this receptor talks to its own neuron and this receptor talks to its own neuron. So two neurons. So we say this is a low receptive field high discrimination. I should say small receptive field, not low, sorry, small. The reason is because this one neuron is only concerned about the small space, a small receptive field. This neuron is recepting in a small field, right? This neuron right here is not hearing from this one or this one or this one or this one. 
It's only worried about the small little space. It's high discrimination because we have two neurons in close proximity and we're able to tell that there's two needles. So this neuron is going to the brain and this neuron is going to the brain, telling us there are two signals or two needles touching our skin. So let's talk about the receptive field now. Hope you don't have a fear of needles, but if you do, you know, too bad. <laughs> we have this receptive field. So you have this needle here, okay? And this needle touches our skin, right? This entire big circle is the receptive field. That's the entire receptive field. But towards the center of the receptive field, there's, we got a lot of actual potentials firing towards the center. Towards the outer side of the receptive field, as far, you know, further away you go from the point of impact of the needle, we get a little bit lower action potentials. Why is that happening? So this is called lateral inhibition, which I'm going to go over tomorrow, but this is like a little bit of a preview of what's happening. So what it is is happening is pretend there's like a neuron here and there's a neuron that's recepting for this big, huge piece. This neuron in the center it's telling its neighbor, neighboring neurons to basically shut up. It's silencing the other neurons. It's basically saying, you can send action potentials throughout the brain, but send it less frequently. The reason is, is because just imagine if they were all equal, the action potentials are all equal. So they all look like this, no matter where you are in the skin. Well, what, what our brain would be telling us is we have a needle that's hitting us but we feel the pain in the entire area, which is not true. In this, because of lateral inhibition, we feel the most pain central, like centralized in one area, and we feel a little, a little bit of pain in the surrounding areas. This helps us with the location. Just imagine if you got a bug bite and Without lateral inhibition, we get the bug bite. We would basically feel our whole leg would be in pain, and we would not know where we got the bug bite. We don't know where the, the bug has bitten us. But with lateral inhibition, we're able to precisely tell where the location is because there's that's you know more action potentials are firing on the, on the location, and it's silencing the area surrounding the point of impact or we got where we got bit because you know for location. So I hope this was helpful. I know this is a little bit confusing, but hopefully I can you know sum it up. I, I mean, you know, easier to understand this lateral inhibition. This stuff, don't worry about it. I'm going to go over it more in depth, you know, in tomorrow's video. So if you if you didn't understand this, that's completely fine. But as long as you got this, then that's great. All right, I'll see you later.